Hi, I'm Jordan Klevinoff. I'm an OBGYN resident at Christiana Hospital, and welcome to this week's episode yeah. of Pocket Pearls. Welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. I'm here with one of my co-residents, Dr. Megan Madrigal, and one of our fourth-year medical students, Gina Ranieri from PCOM. Worldwide, maternal hemorrhage is still a leading cause of maternal mortality, and the pathogenesis that's believed is that there's an increase in clot degradation that leads to this maternal hemorrhage. There was a recent large RCT that showed giving tranexamic acid, or TXA, to women with postpartum hemorrhage within three hours after delivery decreased overall mortality rates without increasing the rates of thromboembolism. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about tranexamic acid. What is TXA? Good question. So TXA actually stands for tranexamic acid. TXA is a lysine analog that binds plasmin and plasminogen, and this binding inhibits plasmin-mediated fibrin degradation. Why does it work for OB hemorrhage? The theory behind TXA's efficacy for OB hemorrhage is that when there's hemorrhage due to situations like atony or placental abruption or an accreta, that that disruption in the placenta leads to release of what's called tissue plasminogen activator, which ultimately, if you look at the pathway, leads to the degradation of fibrin. So knowing how TXA works now, if we can stop or slow that pathway, we can diminish bleeding. Why do we start using TXA in obstetrics? So it's interesting. Actually, most of the data comes from other fields. So in many major trauma centers, TXA is now part of their massive transfusion protocol because it's been shown that if it's used in the first three hours, it actually reduces morbidity and mortality. TXA has also been shown to reduce bleeding in tons of other surgical fields like cardiovascular, ortho, neurosurgery. Interestingly, the same data doesn't show an increased risk of thromboembolic events. What do the studies show in OB patients? Interestingly, there's over 30 studies looking at this question, and overwhelmingly what they've all found is that giving TXA reduces blood loss for women without increasing the rates of thromboembolism. There was a recent Cochrane review that showed giving uh, TXA to women with postpartum hemorrhage reduced the rates of blood transfusion and overall mortality in both C-section and spontaneous vaginal deliveries. What about women with postpartum hemorrhage? Good question. So actually a recent RCT showed that when you've clinically diagnosed postpartum hemorrhage, whether it's after a vaginal delivery or a C-section, um, administration of TXA has been associated with a reduction in risk of death from hemorrhage, risk of going back to the OR for laparotomy for bleeding, and uh, there's no increased risk for thromboembolism. Now a subgroup analysis of this RCT showed that the benefit of TXA is highest if you give it within the first three hours. How much do we give? There's insufficient data to guide us when we're trying to use TXA prophylactically, though it can be done. So if you're gonna give TXA prophylactically before a C-section, let's say, it's the same dose as when postpartum hemorrhage is diagnosed. So when you've diagnosed a postpartum hemorrhage and you wanna give TXA, the initial dose is one gram IV push over 10 minutes. Sometimes that's enough. If the bleeding persists within 30 minutes or within the first 24 hours, you can give a second dose. Interestingly, there's actually pretty decent literature from our trauma colleagues that show you can continue after the initial dose a tranexamic acid infusion. So you give one gram over the ensuing eight hours. Is there any harm to the fetus? TXA does cross the placenta and it is excreted in the breast milk, but currently we don't have any data to suggest fetal harm. Is there anything else we need to know about TXA? There's a couple things to keep in mind when you're using it. So the half-life of TXA is about two hours and the effects last for about seven or eight hours. So usually in our obstetric population, one dose is sufficient to help with bleeding. It's also cleared renally, so it's contraindicated in patients with significant renal disease. And we use the dose of one gram IV, and we really should stay away from giving higher doses because those higher doses have been associated with higher incidences of thromboembolism or seizure activity. So when should we consider using TXA? You should think about TXA whenever you're dealing with a hemorrhage. If you're thinking that you're going to be needing uterotonics, have TXA in the back of your head as well. Keep in mind, though, we don't have great evidence to use TXA prophylactically. So if I'm an intern and I get a call about a postpartum hemorrhage, when should I not use TXA? So there's very few people who wouldn't benefit from TXA. You know, whether it's your postpartum hemorrhage that you're calling for uterotonics for, you should be thinking TXA. If it's your postpartum bleeder that you don't think is hemorrhage yet, but you're uncomfortable with her bleeding, great candidate. 
Um, if she's somebody who has significant medical comorbidities that have compromised her kidneys, which we talked about, excrete the TXA, you know, maybe think about it a little more there. But, you know, even in times of C-section, when you're having more bleeding that you feel comfortable with, your stitches just aren't doing what you want them to do, TXA is fabulous in that situation as well. Really, most people would benefit from this medicine. That was really well said, Megan. To summarize, we covered a lot about tranexamic acid or TXA. Essentially, the OB data taken or borrowed from a lot of the trauma literature is that tranexamic acid reduces the amount of blood loss without increasing the rates of thromboembolism. So for our obstetric population, there are really very few situations where we shouldn't be giving it or at least thinking about it in the setting of hemorrhage. There's evidence now and there's studies ongoing to assess whether or not tranexamic acid should be given prophylactically at the time of C-section or even vaginal delivery. Megan Madrigal, and one of our fourth year medical students, Gina Ranieri from PCOM, grew up in Dresher, Pennsylvania. <laughs> what about women with postpartum hemorrhage? Sorry. <laughs> you were crying. I it's like I've been crying the whole time. <laughs> All right, this is you just being creative. And yeah, really feel free. <laughs> go with it. Okay, go. So, when should we consider using TXA? That's all you came up with? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Great answer, Megan. To summarize, this was we covered a lot about TXA. Essentially, the takeaway points are. Sorry, hold on. Then. <laughs> Whoa! How much do we give? There's actually pretty shitty OB data. <laughs> <laughs>